You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously. My name is Shireen and we have my brother Josh here and today we're going to talk about marrying into an Indian family. Cue the intro. You've been in our, our family for 15 years. 15 years. And um, yeah, so but you and my sister dated in college, right? Yes, we did. So uh, dating in college was not a problem or an issue at all. Mm -hmm. um, kind of funny, it, my, my, I had an older cousin at Northern. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was also dating an Indian. I always was a little bit interested about the Indian culture mm -hmm. and me and Susan just kicked it off pretty good. Then there was a little bit of a difference, like whenever I would go home mm -hmm. or dealing with uh, maybe going on Susan's side of the family or trying to go there right, right. to meet the family. Did mom and dad know about you guys dating in college? They knew about me. Okay. Um, that was probably the extent. <laughs> right. I think we, we were trying to set up something where I meet them. Yeah. But it didn't happen. Okay. I, I think they didn't. They weren't ready to. to to meet me at that time. Okay, how'd that make you feel? Uh, I, I, I guess I was kind of confused because I didn't know the, the situation. Mm -hmm. At that point, I didn't understand uh, some Indians' views of black people. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know, I just thought, hey, you know, I'm yeah. young, she's young. Like, thinking now, my daughter says, I want you to meet somebody. I don't think I'm too uh, enthusiastic enthusiastic to me. Right, right, right. You know, you're so, like unsure. Right. Right? Right. And you guys were still pretty young. Still young. Right. So you're right. like, they're probably not sure if it's, you know, right. what's going to happen from this relationship, right. right? Going home into neighborhood and to areas in Chicago, that's when I started feeling a little funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought people were staring at me because I was with someone that was Indian. Mm -hmm. And so, um, after I had some conversation with my friends, they were telling me, no, no that's not, well, we were staring at you. We were staring at you because she was fine. <laughs> so, you know, it was just a misconception. Yeah. I was too worried about what people thought of me. Mm -hmm. and, and I truly didn't know what they were thinking, so. You know, there was always, uh, well, you know, coming up when you're young, you know, that's that's the thought, you know, mm -hmm. to be with your own people. And, yeah. Uh, also, that's the vision of my parents. Yeah. You know, they probably never envisioned me being with an Indian person. For sure. I mean, I think my, that was right. probably the case with my parents, too. Right. And so, you know, being in a neighborhood where, you know, 99% of your surroundings is all black, mm -hmm. that's all you see. So that's what you're used to. Right. You know what I'm that's what you're thinking ahead. That's what you're seeing for, you know, your future. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what you know. I was. That was pretty bad, the way that mm -hmm. I broke up with Susan, because it was no real reason. Mm -hmm. The only reason is, is, you know, I was starting to feel a certain way, feeling kind of funny being with her, because I'm, I'm worried about what other people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And then also with the combination of starting to see that um, some of uh, the family on Susan's side didn't really uh, allow that or that wasn't something good mm -hmm. so the combination of the two yeah sort of pushed me that direction and i remember when i broke up with her i was telling her yeah you just need to marry somebody indian or be with somebody indian mm -hmm. and she was hurt yeah she, sure. she was really hurt and um at that point i was convinced yeah i need to be with somebody black yeah you know? um so you know i i had some bad relationships afterwards mm -hmm. um and in the back of my mind, I was always saying to myself, you know, Susan was the best girlfriend I've ever had, just as far as compatibility, her yes. attitude, her demeanor, you know, um, how she was caring. Mm -hmm. I, I never ran into to that again, you know, so it's always in the back of my mind. And um, there came a point where um, I had to make some major changes in my life, just, just with my lifestyle in general. Mm -hmm. uh, hooked up one of my buddies from, from school. He invited me to come out to his church. I'm like, I ain't coming out to your church. Mm -hmm. I ended up going and uh, just a light bulb went off yeah. while I was at church. Um, 
And that's when I said, I made a decision. I said, you know what? I'm going to live right. I'm going to live my life for Christ. And so at that point, I cut off a whole lot of stuff. I cut mm -hmm. off uh, the type of music I listened to, mm -hmm. which was polluting my brain. Uh, I stopped drinking. Um, I changed my speech, stopped cursing. And I really separated myself uh, from a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I started to get a clear mind. Mm -hmm. clear thinking my own thoughts and um, I also did a lot of praying and during that time Susan kept popping up mm -hmm. so there and there was a reason why Susan kept popping up with a clear mind because now all the smoke cleared yeah understand what I truly feel yeah what I'm thinking I'm knowing the only way that I'll get back with Susan is, is if it's a miracle mm -hmm. that's what I'm thinking it got to be God if yeah if I'm gonna get back with her right so uh, one day my mom said i saw your wife i'm like what are you talking about you saw my wife yeah i think she had ran into susan uh at the airport mm -hmm. and um she told me yeah i saw susan and i was kind of excited and mad at the same time yeah uh i was i was mad because i felt like one of the reasons i broke up with her was I felt that everybody thought I needed to be with a black person. Mm -hmm. And then to hear that, I'm like, what? I messed that whole thing up? Yeah. And uh, and, and she, she hugged, my mom hugged me and said, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. You yeah. know, that, that was wrong. You know, I thought about that and I shouldn't have made the statements that I made. She didn't have anything against Susan, but she right. just felt that um, I should be with a, a black person. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was working for Sears and Northern had a campus that was like, right across the street mm -hmm. and it just so happened susan was doing our mba mm -hmm. and we hooked up for lunch at, at this time we're both two different people now this is years yeah. years past you mm -hmm. know um and so just talking with her and her talking to me it sort of didn't gel mm -hmm. at first just experiences hurts whatever the case may be right um but i just knew it sounded like no nah, i gotta keep keep trying keep so I, I kept yeah I kept trying I mean she was she was shooting me down bad she was yeah I'm like man I'm like well nah I gotta keep trying I gotta keep trying mm -hmm. and um uh, so it got to the point where we really started dating and getting back serious at this point I knew that I wasn't dating just to be dating yeah I, I knew I wanted to marry her mm -hmm. and I sat down and had a conversation with her mm -hmm. And I just laid out everything. Mm -hmm. My thoughts, feelings, what I was thinking. Knew it was some, some huge hurdles, but I kept saying, if this is the right one, it's going to happen. Yeah. And I had confidence at that point. I wasn't nervous about anything. Mm -hmm. um, I still didn't know to what extent and why uh, the family was against black people. Mm. It was kind of confusing to me. Yeah. Uh, being that you know i'm skin wise and i'm like man we're like same right, right same skin tone <laughs> i'm a little darker than you my concern was susan mm. how she was feeling yeah like she was being blackballed and mm. treated differently yeah and there was events that she couldn't go to because she was dating me and i'm yeah. like man this is messed up right. that's that's when i started no, realizing I, how and deep i remember it was all getting. this yeah that's when i started noticing how deep it was mm -hmm. and uh but susan was a trooper yep so at that point i'm like man you know we really can ride together yeah. because she's not bagging down because yeah. of the circumstance. Right. Um, but I, I knew it was hard for what was hurting her. I finally met mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a huge hurdle, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for the opportunity. So I'm thinking like, man, I got to do my best with this interview that's coming up. <laughs> so. And if you know, like, you know, mom and dad now, and it's like, right. it's just so. Night and day. Night and day, right. like they, when people tell me like, you don't get it, your parents are different. Like mm -hmm. you have to understand like, this took time. Right. This took a lot of conversations. Right. This took having kids for 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. That's why our, my parents are the way they, they are. Right. Yep. They had three vocal girls, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Before I, um got to the house, mm -hmm. my thought was, I'm gonna have an issue with Susan's father mm. and Susan's mom, I think I'll be okay. Yeah. And it was harder with mom than dad. So funny, yeah. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Um, 
mom was kind of short. Mm-hmm. She asked me two questions and and and, and exited the room. <laughs> And if you know my mom, my mom is so warm. My mom yeah, is so is. loving, so yeah. kind. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. And uh, me and your dad, I feel, I feel, I don't know how he, he took it, but I felt that we had a real good long conversation. Mm -hmm. and, um, he probably saw some things about me that probably changed his his views. I, I don't know what it was, but I'm just saying from my point of view. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so. Um, I think as we began to talk more and, and do things, we started seeing similarities yes. in certain things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think one of the, the biggest factors in the whole game, from, from my perspective, is that both families were Christian. Mm -hmm. So that was the foundation. I think at the point that we were engaged, mm -hmm. I had a couple other situations that sort of had me thinking like, man, this thing is deep. So my whole thought, okay, have a good attitude, talk to people. Right. So I saw one of the uncles and I went over there, hey, how you doing? Stuck my hand out there. He wouldn't shake my hand. Wow. He just stood there with his hand like this and would not shake my hand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So I told Susan about it and uh, I, I think she might've been hurt by it. It's just different, different scenarios where mm -hmm. No, it's just a conversation when I start hearing how they were talking about some of the communities uh, or, or the people. And, and I know that a lot of it was not based off of experience because if, if they got to know us, mm -hmm. it'd be totally different. So like jumping to now, I'm cool with everybody. Yeah. It, is that that issue's not there. So I know that was just because uh, not really knowing or not having a relationship or yep. experience. From, from the beginning, from always trying to have a good attitude and mm -hmm. putting your... Best foot uh, out there. Best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And after constantly, you know, just certain situations, mm -hmm. after a while you get kind of hard and sort of distance. Mm -hmm. Sort of distance myself. Or we'll have short, short surface conversations because I'm thinking they think differently about me. You know, now it's like, especially with, with mom and dad, and mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't even see color or nothing. They're yeah. just family. You right. know what I'm saying? Same thing with Susan. Um, I don't, you know, people say it's an interracial relationship. I don't even see the race in it. Yeah. It's just, Susan's my wife. Yeah, you know, this, that's is, it. this is your family unit. Right. And then the kids, the same thing. I mean, I, I just see them as, as, my, as my kids. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't, you know, other people probably see it differently from just looking from the outside. Oh, I, I don't see it that way. Right, because it's your normal. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think it's not a lot of people's normal, so that's why it's such a big deal for them mm -hmm. because it feels like such a big change and such a big difference. I think uh, we got, the cultures are a little bit different and the way that we do things, mm -hmm. but it's, it's when you have an understanding of why someone does something that doesn't make it hard. Yeah. So like with the, with the situation on how they feel about us, I'm thinking, okay, it's, a lot of that is due to the propaganda, mm -hmm. stuff that's taught. I mean, Media. my right, my black people, we fed the same stuff, and we treat each other bad based off of, off of uh, the same education system, the same propaganda, the same uh, systematic oppression, or whatever you want to call it. It's a it's a messed up situation, and it's, and it's global. Understanding that, and uh, to be able to, to to protect your own heart and mind in those mm -hmm. situations. I had this one situation where we I think I was waiting for. India, somebody to go to the washroom. Yeah. This guy comes from out of the crowd, walks straight up to me. Don't ask me my name. He said, what do you do? Mm. I said, what do I do? I'm yes. thinking to myself, what do you mean? What do I do? So yes. I, so I said, I guess he's talking about my job. Right. So I said, I said, I'm a computer programmer. And then he said, oh, I do that too. And then he walked off. I'm thinking like, what was that about? <laughs> but then I started noticing like a lot of the questions, mm. um, that I was getting from people that I would just meet would try to figure out like my status or my income. Mm. What do you live? Is it by here or by there? Mm. Uh, type of job. What do you do at the job? You know, you do this, you do that. Mm. Say like calculating. Leveling right, you, right, trying putting to, you at a level. Right, trying to figure out where I'm at. So I got to a point, Susan, Susan used to laugh. People would come and ask me, what do I do? I say, oh, I take care of my kids. You know, I, I watch kids. And people get upset because I wouldn't go further in it. Uh -huh. But I'm, to my to myself, I'm thinking like, 
you're not really trying to know me. Mm -hmm. And this is not just with, it's anybody when they when they when they ask that question. I feel like they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out where am I at on this social status thing. For sure, and that's like Indian culture. Good things about like being aspiring for a, right. a better life, no doubt. but the whole like status thing is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely trickling down to like my generation. And I think we need to be more aware of it because we're starting to treat people differently and that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of people, I, I don't want us to have that kind of reputation. So, so here's, a, here's a situation. Often, um, I would have to call a store or insurance company or somewhere mm -hmm. to get some information. Yeah. And <clears throat> because of my circumstances and understanding of dealing with people that aren't black, a lot of times I tell Susan to make the phone call because mm -hmm. they don't know what nationality Susan is because mm -hmm. of the way she talks. Mm -hmm. When I start talking, you know I'm black. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I can't hide from it. So often I know I would get short responses or I wouldn't get all the information that I need. So I'll say, Susan, you know what? You make the call. Mm -hmm. And she'll call and she'll get the information and we'll move on like that. So that that's something just like, that's messed up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To, to have to do that. Right. Like uh -huh. you're being treated differently because you're black. Right. Right. Like that's not right. right. Certain, certain things as being a black man, I can't run from or I can't hide from it. And at the same time, because of being black, I have some hurdles yeah. to jump over um, that maybe the, the average person wouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's, it's messed up because it's like, it's been a part of my life so long where, you know, if Susan was to go in a certain circumstance, she'd be like, man, you believe that just happened? I'm like what? Oh yeah, that, that did just happen, that's bogus, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, some of the things, like what you're doing now mm -hmm. is good, you know? This is take two for those that don't know, Yeah. but the first time I kind of, danced around the issue. I don't like discussing stuff that I feel is just obvious. Mm -hmm. But to everybody, it's not obvious. Yep. They don't They don't understand it. They don't understand why, what's going on. Why, do, why does it seem like a black person is always angry? Mm. You know, why did they blow up over this? Mm -hmm. um, could just from dealing with, dealing with the same thing over and over, at some point you snap. You know, I'm tired of it. Yeah. yeah. You just can't deal with it no right. more. Uh, they always angry. Well, you don't you got to understand what the person has gone through just because of their skin right. you know how they're being treated circumstances they put in mm -hmm. not not having the access to certain things getting poor education or being taught lies through education uh making yourself feel like you're you're less than someone else mm -hmm. um not liking your own skin or your own hair or yeah. not liking the way you talk not liking your culture things that your family do uh you know you got to fight against all that you know so that that's tough yeah and then then when it comes to um the law of protection not being able to have somebody to run to for protection mm. but just be abused that's that's tough yeah. so it's just it, it, it's just caving in all on every side you know right so now you're raising four mixed children mm -hmm. and what what has that been like that process like one thing I say, I, I don't see anything different with them. Yeah. I just see them as um, my kids. Mm -hmm. Now the way I might notice the way that other people might look at them. Yeah. Um, that might make me uneasy. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in school or the teacher might single them out in sort in sort of a way. Mm. Uh, like we had a parent say something to this one kid to the to their child that my son was just trying to be a bully and something i forgot what it was over my, my son asked this little boy for something and the boy gave it to him but mine's not a bully no. you know what i'm saying he's nothing like that yeah and i guess the lady was upset because whatever it is that he gave my son must have been worth something not, not a lot but worth something yeah. and i guess from her feeling like Monty took it from the boy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's her assumption. Right. Yeah. And so I, I noticed though that Susan uh, sometimes come home upset about certain things. I think it has to do with, you know, them being darker skinned. Mm. 
uh, <clears throat> but I, I don't, as far as in our house, you know, I don't see them as a, they just like little kids to me. I, I don't pressure them to say that they're black or Indian. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is teach them both sides of the culture. Yeah. But they've been to India. They know my side of the family. I wrote a book uh, just to explain our side, history, everything. So they're just aware. Mm -hmm. um, they spend time with your family and... Right. Yeah. They spend time with, with everyone. And um, what's funny is my son, he's always just say, I'm Indian, I'm Indian, I'm Indian. I didn't, I didn't come against it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, if that's what you say you are, fine, so be it. Yeah. So uh, one day we, when we were going to India. Okay. We were standing in line at the airport, it was me and him, and uh, there was nothing but Indians there. He so was he, pretty young then, right? Yeah, he was young. He come up to me and said, Dad, I'm not Indian. <laughs> you know? So, you know, something, yes. Yeah. To him, something triggered, like, I'm a little different, you know, I'm not the same. And I found that very interesting because it's not, I didn't push it on him. Yeah. I just let him observe him, right. himself, you know? And uh, that, that was funny. Are there um, things that you're concerned about? Uh, right now, I do have concerns. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I try to protect them from a lot of things. I don't want them to be hurt or looking down at themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want them to feel different. Yep. Uh, you know, th the good thing is that mom and dad don't, don't make them feel that way. Mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't call themselves Indian if they felt that different, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So. Um, they 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 feel comfortable, mm -hmm. you know. They haven't had situations that that made them think differently at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the stuff that I experienced initially, they're oblivious to it. You right. know, they, they don't know about that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a good thing, you know. Like, this stuff is just important to me. Probably a big part of it for me is I don't want them to ever feel different. Do you have any advice to like? couples if you're not ready to go through situations together you need to really think about it mm -hmm. because there are possibilities that uh you might lose some family members with how they treat you mm -hmm. you might that might happen yeah. thankfully with us you know it turned for the good everyone you know? came around right turned yeah. for the good so there is that possibility that um and that's that's what i saw to susan i saw that she she was going to ride mm -hmm. whichever way. So yeah. she had come to that point. Right. But if she would have went, if she wasn't sure of herself and wasn't really ready for that, it probably would have broke up mm. the marriage. So yeah, got to be sure and, and, and um, sure about it, you know? Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I was, I was sure I wasn't worried about it you know, right. at that point. But if I would have had those questions, that would just then I wouldn't want to go to events, her events. She wouldn't want to come to my events, and, mm -hmm. uh, feeling bad about each other's side of the family, and then that right. trickles down to the kids. You telling stuff to your kids about this side, and you know, you know, that's not what what you want to happen. Right. Yeah. And your family has been so welcoming of all of us. <laughs> like we've celebrated, I think Thanksgiving and Christmas with yeah, you guys before, yep. and. That was always just like a reminder of like, yeah, this is a good family. Right? Right. Like that's what's important. Like my dad will say even now, like how do, how how can I call myself a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. If that's how we're judging people, like based on right. who you are, like you can only judge people on their character. You right. can't judge them like on their race or their past or right. their history. Like that's that is what it is. People sometimes may treat them differently. And I think as a parent, Susan actually addressed this in her video, as a parent, you need to be watching your kids on how they're treating other people. Right. And they're usually picking that up, I think, from mm. their parents. There's always been a spark that will start the conversation. Yeah. The problem is there's no real change mm -hmm. after the conversation. It's like nothing's done, nothing's put in place because the people that are empowered to do that mm -hmm. are the ones that's not making a change. Yep. Like, you know, you and your community might, hey, you know what? We gotta change all this. You know, let's go speak up. We know what's right and what's wrong. But if the people that's making these laws and doing this stuff is not, mm -hmm. it's, it's just an ongoing thing. Right. Somebody else just got killed. Oh, they put this person in jail. And right. 
it's just ridiculous. Right. Like, so what do you think can change the situation? The people huh? that's in power that yeah. wake up. Right. So voting. We need to be... It, yeah, that's true. We but you know what? It's, it's like this. If you make the laws, you always could change it to keep yourself on top. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'd be some type of loophole. Yeah. You know, that's why I say those people have to really make some changes and do some things different. Yeah. And we could also engage in that kind of work, right? True. I always say, like, Indian people have so much influence. We have so much power. We have a lot of financial power. And so we need to use that for good. And I think a lot of the conversation about this, especially among the South Asian community, is like, hello, like, we are here in this country because of what black people did for us. There are successful business people here in this country from mm -hmm. India, and you wouldn't have had a successful business mm -hmm. without the black community. It's sad that the only way to be heard is to lash out, mm -hmm. break stuff, burn stuff, but that's the only way. People are listening. Yeah, that's the only way, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And yeah, I mean, for me, this is like, this is my family. And so how I see it is that this is my brother. Those are my nieces and nephews. I don't want them to be treated any differently. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything to ever happen to my nephews, like mm -hmm. when they're interacting with the police. And so I hope how you can look at it is if you are an Indian person, you may look at me as your sister. This is my mm -hmm. brother, so this is your brother as well. There's so much change that needs to happen and we need to be power in numbers. Yeah, that's no how, doubt about it. That's how I no see it. it. And so that's why I feel a sense of responsibility to engage the Indian community. Mm -hmm and talk to y'all because mm -hmm. I, most of my following is Indian. You have to educate yourself, you gotta do all these things, but you also need to like hear some stories. You need to interact with black people. You need to all right. make it a part of your life. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing, you know, I'm glad you're doing that. At least, you know, it, it opens the door uh, for those conversations, for people to start getting some type, not saying they're gonna understand everything, yeah. but get some type of understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then they start thinking like, why do I even have those thoughts about them? Yeah. You know, why do I say those things about them? Oh, you know what? I shouldn't. You know, all my interactions have been great. You know. Yeah. And it, it's unlearning everything. Right. Right. And it's it takes a lot of work. It's not easy. Don't judge yourself. Just make yourself better. <laughs> just just don't try not to do it again. <laughs> or be right. aware of it when yeah. you do when the thought does come and be like, hey, I'm having this thought. I shouldn't. Right. Like. It's it's a journey. With bad situations, I can't label everybody. If I had a situation with somebody, I can't label that whole community mm -hmm. as such. Right. Each individual is different. You right. got you got criminals in each each. Yep. <laughs> each culture, you got criminals. Yep. You got people that are, are sweet and nice. So you got it all. You know. Yeah. And every single community. Yeah. And so you can't, and it's the same thing. Like if you have a bad experience, you can't stereotype right. another community, just like how they're doing with black people. Right. And so, you know, I feel like when people say, my parents are old and they're set in their ways, like, give them a chance. My parents were, were in the fifth, their fifties, hmm. right? And you just never know. It's worth the conversation. It's worth the try. Because, I mean, they're going to be here for probably at least like 20 or 30 more years. Like, you know, I, I think it's important to try to continue to better yourself. Right. And better the people around you, especially right. if they're saying like racist things. Like, I don't know. I could not I could never be around that. Right. And so. It's uncomfortable. I, I just hope people stay engaged. I, I think what's really important is not taking up too much space, especially right now use my my platform be more thoughtful what needs to get done and how do we like dismantle our like own racism mm. and what do we need to do to like stop police brutality and what's the, there's a there's a long right. long haul right there's so many things that need to happen and so how are you going to be a part of that right. story and so yeah. It's a it's a big ask too, so don't feel overwhelmed because I've had days where I've been very overwhelmed. But you know, you, it's a long haul, so you, you need to be ready to to work. Yeah, these these situations could be uh, very emotional. Yes, which it's taxing on the body. Yes, real stressful. Mm -hmm. so it, can, it can get to you. Yeah, you look how deep and ingrained this stuff is. Like right. man, 
what's going on. Many people are very tired, I think. Yeah. yeah. Let yourself right. like just sit in it. Right. I've been trying to just sit and be like, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I thank you for having it. me. Yeah. This was take two. This was take two. At first, you know, I was fine with our conversation, but then um, you reached out to me and said something about wanting to like yeah. to get deeper, and I appreciated that. Man, I was like, yeah. I was so happy that you sent that because. I just didn't want to push, you know, I just feel like it's just a sense, it's a sensitive, like it's a, I don't want you to feel like I'm attacking you or yeah. I'm pressuring you to talk about something and so I'm thankful that we can get deeper because, I mean, that's how you learn, that's how you grow. Yeah. You know, that that's one of the things with, uh, like, in this marriage, a lot of times I do want to be careful what I say mm -hmm. uh, because I don't want to make the situation uncomfortable not just for me but also for Susan because that is two two sides of it so yeah if I made a mistake and brushed that's I, I, I'm not worried about that now but yeah. if I would made mistakes and brushed family members the wrong way and now Susan's in the middle of it mm -hmm. I know she'll take my side but still yeah. it just makes it hard on her right so I've always tried, tried to be careful mm -hmm. you know what I say uh, in certain circumstances and then like the interview too I was like trying to be cool about things and not just say the wrong thing and right uh, but after having some discussions with Susan about this whole situation that's going on now mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the unrest the questions that she had made me say you know what I should went on and just discuss some of these things with, mm -hmm. with you so uh, that I didn't sh I wasn't up front with, with yeah. a few things so and I, and I think Susan was cool with it so I felt the, the okay to yeah yeah to go with it so right no yeah. and i know it's not easy so i appreciate you yeah no doubt yeah all right well thank you all so much for watching yeah we do this every single week go be good people <laughs> bye peace